Um, so this week's schedule, so uh, like uh, our midterm will be in two weeks and uh, um, and the plan is we'll have multiple choice for our uh, midterm and the final, um, if we have a higher final than the midterm, then the final is gonna like replace midterm as the uh, exam score. If uh, if the final is lower than midterm, then uh, it will be the average of the two. So uh, by like like uh, by uh, the according uh, weights. And uh, next week, uh, I will post like uh, a midterm review questions if we have. If we have taken our 449, so uh, the, the, we will have a similar review question. Most of them are like a qualitative questions too, but uh, um, but the but the I mean the midterm question are most designed based on homework, both coding and the theory part, um, and will be um, like uh, reformatted into a multiple choice. Uh, and uh, um, so this week. Um, We'll start a new module, which is stochastic gradient descent. So today uh, we will try to motivate why we want to use stochastic uh, gradient descent, and uh, um, and so because um, last week we actually I kind of miss the missing lecture on Wednesday since we didn't have chance, but uh, I'll just use the result from lecture eight uh, notes that I have posted. And uh, um, so then let's begin. Um, so the first question we asked is from higher perspective, why gradient decent work? And now let's review. So um, like, um, In 449, our objective function is a quadratic function. Um, this our, this is our. Um, so this is our objective function. I'll say the um, the function we'll try to minimize, and uh, it's quadratic, and we assume. Sorry, I think you're muted. Um, like how long have, have I been muted? Like just uh, a few you... seconds. No, you're just good. a few seconds. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Huh, that's weird. I didn't. Okay, great. So um this was thanks. Um, so this was the objective function back in 449. If we look at the proof from a very high perspective, so let's review. And we know that the gradient of this function is nothing but qx subtract b, okay. Um, so if we look at the proof, okay. So it's gradient decent. Um, is x k plus one equals x k subtract alpha times gradient of f at x k. So now this becomes, whoops. And then we got to use the fact that um, we, we're going to insert, we're going to insert um, like uh, our gradient of X star. So we know, so if X star is the local minimizer, so I'm just going to use minimizer. 
Um, we know that gradient evaluate at this point, okay, is zero. What does that mean is we can simply replace this B with QX star, okay? And then we have our error equation is by subtracting X star on both sides. Okay. If we simplify, we'll get the right-hand side is identity matrix subtract alpha Q times XK um, X star, okay. And then we take uh, uh, the norm on both sides and then we use Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So I'll go very quick. Um, And then we have this and we hope this is a contraction. So uh, we set uh, this. So we require this guy, sorry, strictly less than one. Um, and so we have a contraction and then we have convergence. So this is for quadratic function, right? And, and based on this condition, we derived uh, the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues of Q. Okay, so the eigenvalues of Q, so based on this condition, so this condition, so this condition we have constraints on eigenvalues of Q, like the maximum eigenvalue and the smallest eigenvalue, okay. And then we have convergence. So they satisfy certain conditions and, um, and alpha together, alpha can now be too big um, and we have convergence. Now let's look at uh, our proof. So we, we spend like a whole class, uh, but um, I, didn't, I didn't think uh, I went through it like very well. So um, like, uh, because there are lots of, uh, you know, theorem Taylor expansion involved uh, because we haven't done um, the equivalence proof in the homework three yet. So we have to rely on many like more elementary formula, but now, but from a higher perspective, okay. So from, from lecture uh, eight notes also uh, in the homework three, okay. So we, we, we made the assumption. So for a general F, like a general smooth F of X, we made two assumptions. The first one is strong convexity. Okay. The second one is the Lipschitz continuity, but for the gradient of F. So, all right, we, we made these two assumptions. And today, even though we have proved it using, you know, the definition, uh, but it's it's more about technicality. So today we'll we'll, we'll explain it from a, a higher perspective why this works. Um, we've shown in lecture eight notes. So if we haven't checked it, uh, please go check it. Um, we've essentially the strong convexity. The strong convexity is equivalent of saying the Hessian matrix of F. So F is now, so if F is S, okay. So if F is S, we, we, uh, we have derived, I think in our review homework or uh, in, uh, or in our, um, so I have also posted the notes of 449. So we have uh, learned how do we take uh, a Hessian of this. We'll get Q, okay. So this 
condition, this strong convexity of F. So in, in last, you know, in lecture eight, this is essentially, we're saying this. So this is equivalent to saying the minimum eigenvalue of the Hessian matrix is greater than the positive number mu at every at every x, okay? Or say every x of f's domain, but in in uh, in our setting. So in order to make the presentation uh, simpler, uh, we just assume the domain of f is like uh, R n, okay? And uh, uh, Lipschitz continuity of f is essentially the Hessian of F is bounded above. Okay, so again, L L is uh, is a real number. So this is this is like the maximum eigenvalue. So so max eigenvalue of all right. I mean, if we haven't checked. Uh, lecture eight notes, uh, please go check it. Basically it has a, like a more detailed, you know, re more rigorous, so not shortcut type of uh, proof of everything um, for the theory homework three. So, uh, and in it, uh, we've shown that the Lipschitz continuity of gradient F is the equivalent of this condition and, uh, um, and the strong convexity um, like uh, is equivalent to this. So with this, these two condition, so maybe let me use this. Okay, let me use this. Okay. So this is what? This is nothing but uh, mu x square. So I mean, uh, I'm using um, I'm using again. Um, we're using this uh, one axis to represent the input, and the vertical axis to uh, to denote the f. So essentially, uh, maybe this. So this is L that. So I draw this uh, just to illustrate because both of them um, have to be actually passing um, the origin. Um, so yeah. Yeah, so they, they should be passing the origin. But let me let me draw it rigorously. Okay. Um, but we don't have I think let me think about it. Okay. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to. So this uh we have this plus some linear term. Okay, and this plus some linear term. So when we take Hessian, the, the linear term is got. And what what so this uh, um, these two conditions tells us is that uh, the function is a convex and Lipschitz continuity function. You know in this envelope. Okay. So at every point, I mean. So the linear function depends on where this uh, point is. Let me look at uh, my book. Okay. Yes, uh, it depends on where the point at, but uh, at every point, you know, locally speaking, this function is within this envelope 
of two quadratic functions. So it's kind of nice. And for this type of function, we can prove convergence. And actually we can show you in exact way. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's write down the like, uh, like high proof from a high perspective. So we have, So this is GD for uh, for general f, and uh, f of x has to uh, f of so f this function f has to satisfy uh, that condition that is uh, at every point um, we have it's a strong convex and uh, its gradient is Lipschitz continuous. So we proceed to do the same thing. Uh, we know that this one is zero at uh, minimize uh, x star. Um, so we can insert this gradient of f of x here. And what do we have here is um, All right, so we insert, we insert um, this gradient here. And moreover, now moreover, now we insert again, the X star on both side. And we use Taylor on this term. So like, like the last time we did, but last time we use uh, uh, integration Taylor so that we can exploit uh, some uh, condition, but here we just use mean value theorem type Taylor. So, so we use Taylor theorem. Okay. So the Taylor theorem says the following, um, there exists some point between uh, xk and uh, x star. So it is alpha um, gradient, sorry, Hessian of f evaluated at um, x star plus t of x minus x star. So this is our Hessian matrix evaluated at a certain point between xk and x star. So this is xk and then xk subtract x star. Okay, so let's denote this point with another, let's uh, denote this as, as zero as our c of k. Okay. So what happens is we, <laughs> We have the exact same, um, not exact the same, but almost the same expression. Okay. And now we use, uh, we take the norm, we use Cauchy Schwartz. Okay, so take the norm. Use Cauchy Schwartz, we will have so now we can see that. Even though estimating estimating um, this because this is not a constant, um, this is not a constant like a, a matrix anymore. All right, this is not a constant matrix anymore. It changes. Like this is a function of x k. So that's my point. This is a function of x k, and uh, uh, estimating this requires lots of, uh, you know, like. Um, I would say more rigorous analysis, but we can we can view okay so so when 
the strong convexity and two, Lipschitz continuity uh, of gradient of F, when these two conditions hold, okay, because F is within that quadratic function envelope at every point, this is like a constant matrix. So, because why we do not use this as our rigorous proof, because this is not rigorous. Okay, so we have to estimate it like a non-constant, uh, like a functions, because this depends on this, okay. Um, Fun the functions matrix norm. It's not a e it's not very easy to do. So that's why we choose like um, the more rigorous, but uh, but still not easy. I mean, um, but this one is uh, from a higher perspective. We can view this as i minus alpha q, which is earlier, right here. Okay. So this is this is a gradient descent for four four nine is for quadratic function, but with but with um, these two conditions, so our function behaves locally like a quadratic function. And that, that's why, uh, you know, to make our life easier. And this is, like, this is like the realm of current status of optimization. We have to add lots of constraint to prove something, okay. Um, so, and now, uh, so now um, to estimate this, so then we have to require by, you know, so by this one is less than L greater than uh, mu. Okay. So very similar. Okay, so very similar, very similar. to 449, uh, we can show that, we can show that, uh, we can show, so I'll skip the sh uh, showing this. Um, we can uh, refer to the first 449 notes I posted and we can show very similarly when alpha is chosen as two divided by mu plus L, we have this um, uh, rate of convergence that is, uh, and then we plug in above, you know. So K plus one subtract X star is less than, uh, I believe this L minus mu, L plus mu times X K subtract X star. So this is our uh, this is our contraction result. And uh, um, this actually concludes the first part of today's class. And uh, um, let me just make sure everyone like is comfortable. But this is a, like a um, proof of a gradient descent from a high perspective, okay. Um, so for the for the more rigorous proof, um, we have to refer to uh, lecture seven. So uh, for more rigorous for rigorous proof, um, refer to lecture seven. All right. All right. Thanks. Um, And now let's move on to our next module of uh, our class. That is a stochastic gradient descent. This is actually one of the two pilots of modern deep learning. Why I'm saying this is because uh, we're going to use the example to illustrate why in the era of big data, 
only the stochastic gradient descent will work. So why we cannot use um, like a, a gradient descent. So let me add the, um, let me add um, one formula on the page in previous. So in 450, as we have learned like several loss function, so the loss function So the loss function L, let's say, uh, let, let me let me like let me use L, yeah. Okay, so the L is in general in this form. Okay. So F of W. Um. So, and then x, i, y, i, okay. So this this is our last function uh, we tried to minimize, and uh, um, and this is called element wise loss. So element wise loss. For example, it can be the mean, uh, the square loss. For example, it can be uh, our model's prediction subtract. So it can be our model prediction based on the data, subtract our true target, then we take square, or it can be like uh, our model prediction, converting it to a probability, and then we plug into the cross entropy formula and uh, we get uh, our like element wise loss. And then, it depends on how many sample we have. Um, this n, for example, for the mnist problem, for the mnist problem, the training data has uh, has how many? Sixty thousand. Okay. So, for example, uh, for the mnist problem, for the mnist data set, uh, n equals sixty thousand. I mean, 60,000 is not a small number, actually. Um, what happens is, um, what happens is the more sample we have, so the limitation, and uh, so let's look at first. So limitation of gradient descent, okay. So now let's look at, uh, um, our loss function. So the first one, um, so here uh, I'm gonna use a big old notation we learned earlier in our semester. Computing the gradient okay takes big O N that many times, okay. So, and so O in complexity to com uh, to compute. So if we take into consideration of if we take into consideration of computing the back propagation of neural network, okay. So um, so if say. Um, the neural network has this uh, little a m parameters, even though uh, this won't, you know, save time, it's like a fixed number. So we've demonstrated that um, computing, computing uh, requires, so we've demonstrated computer back propagation. So even though I think it's m fifth, so the back propagation is like an order higher than the um, like the forward pass, and but uh, so this is like this guy will multiply that, but this doesn't scale with n. Okay, so this looks okay because it scales linearly uh, with um, with with n. Okay, however. 
if we think about this. So right now here, N is 60,000. Let me give you guys another example, which, uh, which is a more than um, benchmark data, data set called uh, ImageNet. So it's, um, I think it's compiled by uh, Microsoft. So it has, it has all, so it's a label data. First of all, it's label data. Um, so label data. So it has all sorts of objects in the data. It's not just a cat and dog and uh, not like those. So a data set called Cypher, it's like, um, um, uh, it's like a MNIST or image recognition. This one has a, uh, So uh, right now it's being updated, but uh, several years ago, it has 1.5 million images and no computer, unless we have a supercomputer. So no computer can load this into the memory. So. If we cannot even load the images in the memory, <laughs> there, there is no like a taking gradient, okay? So as we can see, it, even though it scales only linearly with respect to the sample, um, so when N is big, it requires lots of memory, okay? So. Um, Okay, what's even more severe, what's even more severe is, uh, let's do the simple thought experiment. Okay, we have the same loss function, but instead we add, so, so by the way, N is number of samples in the data set, okay? So this is element-wise loss. It means we compute the loss for every samples. Imagine we do the following thing. We do not change the samples. We just make an extra copy of them. Okay. We just make an extra copy of them. Like we don't change the samples. So. And what happens to our loss function, so our new loss function becomes, now, now we have two n, two n samples, all right? We, we make a copy of each one, but uh, for each copy, the loss function is the same. So, um, Same loss function, same loss function. This is the same with our previous loss function. Let, let me add a tilde just to uh, make it like uh, different in our setting. But this expression is exactly the same with our previous example right here. Okay. However, if we think about how crazy this is, uh, so if you think about how crazy this is, taking gradient, take L stars gradient, okay? And we pretend, we pretend, we do not know the samples are copied, okay? We pretend each sample is still a new sample. So we do not know, suppose we're given some data, you know, we do not know some of two of them you know, each are, are paired, like uh, every two of them are the same. We do not know. We're just given like a huge data set. And then computing else gradient takes two times 
of the computation time of computing time, then, sorry, part of my spelling, then L is gradient, okay? Because we, we now have two examples. So given how insane uh, the computation cost scales with um, the number of samples. So how do we do this? And the third thought experiment is, is even crazier. Okay, now suppose we have trained even suppose, so suppose um, we finished, by finished, uh, we mean, uh, I mean like we find a reasonable closed uh, point near the minimum of a model, like uh, we have trained the network or whatever. Suppose we have finished training, oops, Suppose we have finished training of a big network with a big data set. Okay. For example, we have trained a model um, on the image net, like using gradient descent. Let's just pretend we can do that for the 1.5 million images, okay? Now, a new single image has come. It's, it's possible, right? So people are taking billions of photos per day and, um, and we wanna improve our algorithm. So of course we wanna incorporate the new things in our data set, right? But now a new comma has come. Okay, so a new sample. A single new sample has come. Just for this single new sample, if we wanna improve our model, okay. So. even just for a single image comes to our data set, if we apply the gradient descent to the loss function, then we have to compute. Okay, so then it takes, um, still it takes order n that amount of time to compute gradient, okay? And, and let me further explain how crazy this thing is, is imagine we have finished training for a model. I mean, this network has already been trained. It, uh, um, it can perform its task reasonably, reasonably well, okay? Now just a single one image has come. We have to, you know, recompute all the gradient again. Can we just, so the motivation is if we have, you know, like new images comes every day. Can we just make like small changes just based on uh, those uh, like uh, new newcomers? Um, because our model has already seen um, the old images. So the answer is, is yes. Okay, so first is a computation time problem then it's a memory problem. And this is like uh, the extra computational time problem. And then this is called an online learning problem. So so this is, um, to solve this, um, the approach is called online learning. So opposed to the offline learning. Offline learning just means gradient descent and the online learning is uh, stochastic gradient descent. We'll, um, we will learn right now, so SGD. 
So for SGD, okay. So when a new comma, when a new comma, when a new comma comes into our data set. So when a new sample. Um, so X. Let me make this. Uh, let me choose the uh, index. Um, okay, let me choose the index. Suppose we have uh, um, the iteration. Suppose we're at, uh, so at uh, kth iteration. Uh, suppose we have Suppose we have a new sample, okay. Wait a second. Suppose we have a new sample, we should choose um, when a new sample, it's a, uh, um, did I use X just now? Okay, I used W, good. So at the kth iteration, suppose we have a new sample. So let me use I, uh, I K. Okay. So sorry for the nested, this subscript. Okay. I K. All right. Suppose we have a new sample. The solution is simple. We only compute the gradient for this for the loss function of for this single sample. So so here this is gradient of the loss function for only this new coming sample. And uh, we update our neural network. So if a new sample comes and we only update its weight based on this new sample. And now let's look at um, like the convergence theory of it. Actually the convergence theory uh, requires uh, some probability. So now, um, and let's review some of the probability and uh, uh, while learning the convergence of it. Okay. So the idea, the idea is we take expectation on both sides. So expectation. Okay. So we take expectation, we have E of expectation of uh, WK plus one equals expectation of WK. Why it's called stochastic? Because now I'm gonna introduce why I'm gonna call it a stochastic is because when we take the sample, okay. So instead of a new sample, So if we assume, so instead of our thought experiment is uh, we don't have to compute like uh, the gradient for all loss function when a new sample comes, we just assume we randomly choose one uh, uniformly. So we, we assume, okay. So we assume uh, we randomly select a sample, um, this x i k, 
y i k from like all our data set, which is x i y i i from one to capital n. So if we assume, if we assume um, we choose a random sample um, from the whole data set, the expectation, the expectation is actually the average of, uh, of all data set. So actually this equals, so this actually, this expectation actually equals uh, the summation of uh, all the gradient. So this expectation, so the expectation, this is expectation of, uh, of an empirical distribution. So we can call this empirical distribution, but uh, we can also, so let me just write it here. So the expectation, so if we have a sample, so if we have, also it's called a sample mean. So suppose we have N samples, so, um, Suppose we have C1, C2, and Cn. So randomly draw samples. Then the sample mean, or say, um, the, or say the expectation of the empirical distribution. So uh, then. Um, for a single one of them is just one over N. Yeah, let me use a new line. So if we choose, if we choose single one of them, so this is like the empirical, um, this is like the empirical, um, say, expectation. So we take expectation with respect to this empirical distribution, and we have we reached actually. Um, this guy. Okay an alpha, we have an alpha here. So next time, next time we'll learn the convergence of the stochastic gradient uh, descent. So, um, and on, um, on Friday, we'll use code to demonstrate why stochastic gradient descent actually is superior uh, to the gradient descent in many scenario. So uh, that's it for today and uh, um, so see you guys on Wednesday.